I am uh, Tom Browning. I'm a co-owner of Browning Honey Company. We are in Blackfoot, Idaho at our storage facility for the bees in the winter. It is mid-January. It's about 24 degrees outside today and we are shipping bees to California. We first experimented with storing bees indoors in the late 1980s or early 1990s. I think it was a combination of my brothers and my dad that first stored bees in, indoors. So we've been doing it for more than 20 years now. The main reason why we went into the sheds um, in 1996 versus keeping them outside as we had done for two generations prior had to do with the fact that bees that are stored inside preserve more of those bees because they're not actively trying to forage and, and going out in the fog and the chill and not coming home. So we get more bees when we need them. It's kind of against nature to have a large hive of bees this time of year, but that's what the almond growers need in California. They need large hives of bees to pollinate when those trees start to bloom the 1st of February. If bees are kept inside properly, the environment alone can reduce stress. And when you reduce stress, they eat less, they don't transfer as much disease or suffer from the disease and pathogens. Did you feel how much warmer it was when you came in here? 42 degrees in here. This is the bees in the stacks. They've been in here for 70 days. Ventilation comes from the middle. Those tubes are perforated, and so air comes out all the way through. We have 312 hives per row, stacked six high and 13 wide. Oh, you, you, you throw like I do sometimes, way off. He acts like me, I'm a little skittish on ladders. <laughs> yeah. Typically there's about 408 hives on a truck and in our operation that means we're gonna ship about 60 to 65 trucks to California for pollination. Here's your inspection, 432 hives on. Yep, and there's our load sheet. and. Load 42, wow. Okay, Ready to rock and roll. All right, we'll see ya. Okay, thank you, Tom. We just got word that Donner's Pass is closed um, because of snow. A storm came in last night and it's been snowing up there and uh, California Highway Patrol has closed the roads. For westbound traffic, chains are required on all vehicles. Drivers must have maximum chains in their possession in order to proceed. Like we already got a buddy over there. He could be there an hour. He could be there for five hours. We'll just keep plugging and see what happens. If there are problems on the road, a single decision can determine whether or not that, that load of bees arrives in shape for pollination or not. And in worst case scenarios, we've had loads delivered dead. So having the right driver behind the wheel and a good understanding of what's going on is really important. Okay, chain laws off. Well, yeah, we want to get going before they change your mind again. I just let you know that it's open, so we need to go. Okay, bye. Yeah, it's not bad. It's good bee weather. Not that hot. <laughs> I don't know what they had the chain law on for an hour ago, but because we put chains on, they really rattle these bees when you're running this bare pavement with chains on. And that just stirs them bees up terribly. <laughs> well, there's lots of bee trucks here. See now there's this load evidently is not free free clear because they're having to inspect this one. So for the second year in a row we've had the opportunity to take advantage of the California Department of Agriculture's pre-inspection program. We've been able to, to get the trucks through much faster. In some cases we'd had trucks wait eight hours to get across border uh, inspections. And since we've been a part of this program, we've never had a truck take more than an hour and a half. Most of the time, it's about 20 minutes. Right, like I say, we all get here within just a few minutes of each other because we all, our destination is the same.
Once the bees arrive in California, they are distributed to orchards, usually at a stocking rate of about two hives to the acre. And our crews will then re-verify that those hives are in good shape and we'll feed those hives and get them ready for the bloom that'll start sometime in the, in the first part of February. It's really amazing how the bees come out of total darkness and a static temperature and get on a truck and, and they know immediately, just like somebody flipped a switch. And so within the first week, they're cleaning that hive out, all the debris, all of the dead, dead bees is clean. And then they're laying eggs and, and rearing brood. We're feeding them, so they're taking syrup and that stimulation increases more brood rearing. And spring just flips a switch and they're off and running, off and flying. <laughs> yeah.